The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's role play session with your host, James McDonald. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. And I'd like to start, as always, by welcoming our participants to our favorite time of the week, which is role play time. And um, we're looking for volunteers today. We're going to do role playing with you, Craig and I. And uh, we can do this a couple different ways. And we're going to ask you to, uh, to volunteer to be both the agent using the universal script as well as the prospect, maybe a particular prospect that you're having trouble with. Uh, remember this though, what we're interested in is addressing the rule rather than the exception. Okay, like sometimes uh, you guys will say, well, I had this one person and they did this. And so the next logical question is, well, how often is this happening? And if the answer is, well, never, it's never happened before or since, then it's really not an issue that you need to address. That doesn't mean you can't be prepared for, you know, an unusual, uh, you know, objection or what have you. But let's face it: if your if your lead generation system is in place and every day you're generating two, three, four, five or more leads every day, then we need to focus on the rule. We need to focus on what happens over and over and over again, not focus on the once in a while uh, or remote. Um, uh, instance where something comes up that's extremely out of the ordinary. Okay, don't do that. Um, what you want to be really, really good at is what you do over and over and over again every single day with this universal script. And I know that some of you, from your comments and uh, and your emails and, and my conversations with you, what you've discovered very quickly is that this universal script is is really the key. If you're good at this universal script, what you're discovering is that you can book appointments with anybody. And what happens is you, you become so good at booking appointments that you can actually book appointments with those that you shouldn't. They're not ready. You know, their timing is wrong. But you're so good at booking appointments that you're able to book an appointment using this script with just about anybody. That's natural. That's what happens. So I want you to be conscious of that. Once you possess these skills and you're talking to somebody who has requested real estate information using this script, it's extremely compelling and you've removed the risk. So booking appointments becomes very simple. What has to then be the goal is I want to make sure that I'm booking appointments with worthy prospects, worthy prospects. There's a reason why we ask the questions in the universal script. It's because we actually want to hear the answers. The answers are going to tell us the timing and motivation of that prospect so we can then determine would it be appropriate for me for me to meet with them because if it is appropriate I can surely book an appointment with this person but I want to make sure that it's appropriate for me to book the appointment and that becomes your your new focus with the using the universal script once you become really good at this you know when we do our role plays here this morning there are a couple of things that I'm going to be listening out for uh, very very carefully okay the first is this the introduction was not just thrown together. The introduction is very strategic. If you do it properly, the prospect should be appreciative of your phone call. Not hang up on you, not swear, not uh, be rude, but they should actually in some way acknowledge and appreciate your picking up the phone and calling them. And Craig designed it to do that. Okay, so I'm going to be listening out for that. Does this elicit a reaction of appreciation from your prospect? If you're doing it correctly and you're using the introduction correctly, the response will be thank you or a positive reaction. Okay, now, here's why that's vital. It's almost more important than anything else. If the prospect appreciates your phone call and they, they perceive you as a welcomed guest as opposed to a pest, the rest of the call is going to go much smoother than if instead they pick up the phone and you don't use the introduction correctly and now they think you're an annoying salesperson who is soliciting them and all they want to do is get off the phone. Okay, that's not good. So this introduction is way more than just a bunch of words that were thrown together and put on the page, I assure you. So we're going to listen out for that very, very carefully. and. Um, and uh, and we're going to um, we're going to be listening for that. Okay. The other thing is this: you also need to be flexible in terms of understanding that just because a prospect may have responded to a seller offer doesn't mean that they're not a buy first seller. 
in, if that's true, then you should be making them the buyer offer. If they called for a list of properties, you perceive them as being a buyer, but they may own a home that they wish to sell before they buy. See, you don't know any of this until you ask them the right questions, but the, the, the information that the prospect responded to is irrelevant Okay, the information the prospect responded to is irrelevant to the offer that you're going to make that prospect. The offer that you're going to make the prospect is determined by the answers to the questions that you ask them over the phone. Okay, I don't know if I, I can put that any better than that. You're acknowledging that they requested information, but when you ask questions, that's when you're going to determine, is this a buyer? Is this a seller? Is this, a, is this both? Is this a first-time buyer? Is this... What is the motivation? What is the timing? What offer should I make this prospect? You're not basing that on the report that they requested. You're basing that on the answers to the questions that you've asked them. Okay, so having said that, um, let me again welcome all of you to our webinar here today. And I'm hoping that we can get some great volunteers. Some of you are really, really phenomenal with this script already, which is great. And um, we have lots and lots to come on these role play sessions who've been doing this for, for 10 years and a lot who uh, train their inside salespeople. What we always say is if you're going to train your inside salespeople, you better be an expert at this first so that you can train someone else to be equally as good as you are. Um, but I would love to have some volunteers and also we'd also like to take your chat questions as well and, and Andrea will be monitoring that. And as long as your questions relate to the universal callback trip. As long as they relate to lead conversion, then we'd love to talk about it. See, tomorrow is our ad clinic session. So tomorrow is all about generating leads. Today is what we do with those leads, is how do we convert those leads? That's where we make the money, okay? So if your questions relate to generating the lead, please hold off on that question and make sure you come on tomorrow's ad clinic session. Make sure you upload your ads. Okay, so having said all that, hopefully the juices are flowing a little bit here, and we can get started, and we can do some role playing with you, or take any of your follow-up related questions. Um, can I welcome Craig onto the call? Are you on here, uh, Craig? I am, Mr. McDonald. There he how, is. How are you on this lovely Thursday morning? It is a beautiful Thursday morning, and I am uh, top, top drawer. Great. Well, let's uh, let's start doing some role playing. Let's see who our first volunteer is going to be. Our first guest is Mark Huntington. Your line is open. Good morning, James. Hey, Mark. How are you? I am well. Thank you. Okay. Now it's great that Mark volunteered here because I was just talking about the fact that we have some absolute experts. On the uh, uh, on the role play uh, sessions every Thursday, and Mark, as you are all going to hear, is one of those experts. And um, and I know Mark, what you're always looking to do is just refine, just refine your skills. I mean, you've already got this down to a, uh, you know, to a 99 out of 100. You're just looking for that little one percent to uh, to really hone your skills here a little bit. So here's what I'm going to suggest. You and I have done role plays before, back and forth. I want you to do a role play with Craig, and uh, and and I'm going to uh, I'm going to suggest that whatever you throw at Mark, he's going to be able to handle it, Craig. Well, you're too kind. You're setting the bar a little high high there. So I, I was going to I was going to say he's putting uh, quite a bit of pressure on you. <laughs> no pressure. No, I I have 100 percent confidence in you, Mark. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, so Craig, I would like to do a, a, a seller role play. Uh, and you have just ordered my home seller kit off of a postcard that we sent out. <clears throat> okay. All right, so ring, ring. Hello, is Craig there? Speaking. Hello, Craig. This is Mark Huntington with Equity Real Estate. And the reason that I'm calling is that you called into our 800 line to order our home seller kit. I just wanted to let you know we got that request and we've just dropped that in the mail for you. Is that okay? Yeah, I, I really didn't know that this was coming from a real estate agent, though. Yeah, it's uh, coming from an agent. We love to get good information out to folks. And I just wanted to check to see if you ordered that home seller kit because you're planning to make a move in the next three to six months here. Uh, yes, I, I, I did. Uh, we are, are kind of talking about it. I did order that information, but I just didn't know it was coming from an agent. Yeah. Well, li listen, if you were uh, to be moved, would you be staying here locally or would you be moving out of the area? Uh, we would want to stay in the area. Okay. And when do you think that might be? 
we we need something a little bigger. So we're we're looking for something um, a little closer to my work and something a little bit bigger. But uh, we want to um, stay within like 20 minutes of where we live now. Do you have a realtor to help you out with that when the time is right? You know. Uh, the guy that sold us the house uh, has been in touch, uh, and and um, he has been sending us information on uh, homes that might match what we're looking for. Uh, but he but he has not come over to have a look at our house yet. He wants to, but he hasn't yet. Mm -hmm. Well, would you prefer to uh, buy before you list your home, or did you want to get your home sold first? I think we'd like to take a look around at what's out there. We feel pretty confident our house will uh, sell quickly, so. We just want to make sure that we can find something before we um, get our home on the market. Sure. Well, would you like me to email you daily updates of homes that match your criteria from all the real estate companies? Our list is going to include any of the bank foreclosures, company-owned properties, or other distress sales out there. That's a completely free service, and it doesn't obligate you to buy a home. Would that be of interest to you? You know, Mark, I, I think we're good. Um, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, the, the realtor that sold us the house, he's emailing us, uh, already emailing us uh, information on homes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, I don't know what exactly what he is sending you, but, you know, our list is also going to include off-market properties. So we come across a lot of builder bailouts, uh, investor flips, estate sales, things like that, that that are not on the open market. Would you like to get access to those properties as well? Uh, yeah, sure. If uh, there's no Oscar obligation, why not? No, absolutely not. When can we get together for about 15 or 20 minutes so that I can take down exactly what you're looking for? Our days or well, afternoons uh, usually better. Uh, could, couldn't I just tell you what I'm looking for over the phone? Well, you know, I, I want to do a really good job for you. And what we've found in, in doing this all this time, that if we don't take you know, 15 or 20 minutes and, and sit down and really take a look at what you're looking for, I've got a form that I fill out, covers nearly 100 different points. And if I can get a really keen sense of what you're looking for, we get you plugged into our system, and then when those off-market properties hit, those investor flips, those builder bailouts, those estate sales, you're the first one to get a crack at those. So, uh, you know, our days or afternoons are usually better for your schedule. Uh, you know, I, I'm really busy at work. I'd have to check my schedule, but I've got your contact information. Uh, why don't I give you a call back when, I, when I'm available? Yeah, you know, and that, that would be great. Obviously, you're, you're a super busy guy. And so what I might suggest, uh, you know, what would serve us both, I think, is if we just set a tentative appointment. You know, anytime, days, evenings, weekends even, I'm very flexible. And if we set up that tentative appointment and it doesn't work out for you for any reason, all you have to do is give me a quick call back and we can just reschedule. Is there uh, a time okay. that would tentatively work for you? All right. Uh, well, one more question. I mean, if I meet with you, uh, do, I, do I have to sign something? You know, you are not obligated at all. Again, this is a free service and there's no cost or obligation whatsoever. By, by meeting with me and allowing me to do a really good job of taking down your criteria, I can make sure that you get access to all those off-market properties. Of course, you're going to get access to everything online, all the properties that all the other buyers are looking at, but what I want to do is make sure that you get access to those off-market properties. And again, there's no obligation. You're not going to be required to sign anything. Does that work for you? Great. Um, I think you did a very good job there, Mark. Um, so I would agree to meet with um, Mark. Now, let's go through, let's do an autopsy on this, Mark, and, mm -hmm. and um, let's explain to everybody that's brand new with this all the things that are really important here that you did. Okay, so everything with buy, when, when you're making the buyer offer, everything usually goes pretty well uh, up until you're asking for the meeting. I mean, when you ask for uh, the, the, to meet, uh, that's usually when the rot sets in. So up until then, uh, everything is is usually, uh, you know, pretty rosy with buyers because you're offering to send them information on all these properties. You're making it sound uh, like it's different and better than whatever else they're getting. And I really like the way that you you handled that when I said, well, uh, the other agents are already sending me information. You did a very good job of really differentiating your list of homes and this is the way you made me feel that you weren't asking me to stop getting information from the other realtor you, you said as well you know like you're getting this information from the other realtor but my information includes so the, 
the buyer prospects thinking, well, there's no downside. Uh, I'm not, you know, uh, it's not like I'm I'm going to stop getting the information that I'm already getting from the first realtor. But now Mark's offering to send me something that appears to be quite different and better than what I'm getting. He says there's no cost or obligation. So under that scenario, you're going to find that that 90 percent of the buyers that you make that offer to say yes I want that but then mark you came back with the commitment which is well when can we get together and that's where you'll see um, perhaps a, a change in the tone of the prospect uh, that's when the, the rots if the rots gonna set in that's when it's gonna set in and they're gonna say things to you like um, well you know why do we need to meet or can I just give you the information over the phone or can I email you my criteria um, and you came up with a really good reason why we need to meet. And that reason was because you want to do a good job. And I think as real estate agents, we'd all agree if the buyers would come in at the onset for a consultation, of course we could do a much better job. So you said it's only going to take 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, that way you can send me exactly what I'm looking for. You won't be emailing me uh, a whole bunch of homes that don't match my criteria. I won't miss out on anything. You said it was free. Then I gave you another objection. I said, uh, well, you know, that all sounds great, Mark, but um, I'm really busy at work, so why don't I call you back? That was my excuse for not booking the appointment. And I, I like the way that you handled that. You said, um, well, why don't we set up a tentative appointment? Don't cry, Craig. It's just a role play. <laughs> well, you, you know when somebody says they'll call you back, <clears throat> you're not going to hear back from them. Right. I mean, uh, I, I like the way you handled that also. Um, you know, and, and I can, it's funny, Mark, you've been doing this long enough now that uh, I almost, I can tell what you're thinking, which is I have so many different ways that I can handle this. Which one am I going to choose? Uh, like, for example, you were, you were about to say, um, when you were talking about uh, uh, booking the appointment, you were about to say, you know, I don't want to miss out on sending the perfect home or waste your time sending you hundreds of properties that may or may not. You were about to say that, and then you, you, you switched and, and handled the objection a little bit differently, although essentially the same way. One of the things that I want to bring up here is what you want to do when they say they're busy is not only point out that this was designed for busy people, but also, you can reference what they did in the first place to respond to the ad. Like, for example, it, uh, where did they respond to this ad? Where, uh, where was the ad? A postcard. Okay, so they responded to a postcard. Okay, well, that's, you know, postcards a little more difficult because we stuck it right in front of their face. But let's say they were going online. Let's say they responded to an ad online. Well, that means we know that this busy person is spending their time online looking at real estate, which is time consuming. We can point that out. We can say, hey, look, you know, I noticed you responded to my ad online and um, you're obviously spending your, your time, your valuable time, trying to find the perfect property or trying to find the information that you want. This will actually save you hours of time throughout the process because you no longer will need to do that anymore as I'm going to send you only and immediately all of the properties that you're looking for absolutely free with no obligation would that be easier for you than what you're doing currently yeah and can I practice that with you real quick yeah let's do that okay so uh, you know James you mentioned that you're you're taking a look around uh, uh, scanning the market how are you currently looking for properties Oh, you know, I'm going online and I, you know, I look in the newspaper and I've grabbed the real estate magazines and, but mostly online. I got, you know, a couple, uh, couple apps that I've downloaded that have properties for sale. Well, listen, I have a better way. Okay. What I do is when we sit down and I fill out this form where I take down literally about, you know, a hundred different points of criteria for you, I get you set up in our database, our custom database. And I have a buyer specialist who's going to take your criteria and be constantly scanning the market for all of the homes that are a perfect fit. And these are properties that you're not going to find out there online. You know, my buyer specialist is in constant contact with builders, investors, estate sales. And if you give me the opportunity to really understand what you're looking for, you're going to get first crack at those, and they're going to be sent to you automatically every single day. There's no cost or obligation to get set up on this list. So our days or afternoons better for us to sit down and meet for 15 or 20 minutes. 
Yeah, probably days. Probably days would be best. I'm thinking. Um, you know, I, I I should probably talk to my wife and make sure, but 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 days is probably going to be best. Okay, great. Uh, you know, I have some time on my schedule uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, could we meet tomorrow at three? Uh, three o'clock's no good. I got to pick up my kids from school right at right around that time, so it's really difficult. Okay, uh, so so right after uh, you know after you pick up the kids, uh, you mentioned afternoons are best. What would be the best time for you? Uh, probably anything after say four o'clock. Okay, great. I, I have a spot at four thirty. Would you? That's like perfect. To okay, yeah, that, that'll work. Great. Hey, you know what, Mark? This is something else we want to point out. Um, and Craig, I, you talk about this often. You know. If you really do a great job explaining the benefit to a prospect who is clearly worthy of that offer, you know, all of these objections and all of this pushback, it's really reduced when you're making a good offer that the prospect understands, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm, I'm, of course, we're role playing these different scenarios, but the truth is this is if a prospect understands the offer that you're making, they understand that this is of benefit to them. The 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 objections start to diminish. You know, you're not getting all kinds of objections. The re here's when we get objections. There are two reasons you get object objections. Either number one, the prospect doesn't understand the offer. Okay, they do not understand the offer. What is the benefit? What's in it for me? They don't understand the offer, so they object. Even though they're a worthy prospect, they object to meeting with you because they don't understand why. Okay? Or number two, they fear cost and obligation. Okay? The fear of cost and obligation, which is you know, almost the same as not understanding, but those are the reasons why you would hear objections. Or, of course, that you're making the offer to somebody who really isn't worthy of the offer in the first place, and they're going to object. And no matter how good you make the offer sound, if you're making the offer to someone that wouldn't benefit from it, then the objections will never end because you're offering them something that they really don't want or need. So, you know, you're you're uh, really good at this. Um, I think uh, I think everyone would agree. Uh, you know, we're talking about a ten out of ten here. So I'm really glad you volunteered, Mark. Thank you so much. Well, thank you as always. I appreciate your insights, guys. Good stuff. Okay, so who have we got next, Andrea? Well, I wanted to say for those that have joined a little late, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click the hand icon. If you'd like to role play, you must have a working mic or preferably be on the telephone. You can also let me know you'd like to volunteer to role play by typing that in the chat box. Just say, I would like to role play. Our next guests are Anne and Dom Harriet. Your mic is now open. Oh, hi, actually, it's uh, Tadio. I'm sorry, what was your name? Tadio. It's like patio with a T. <laughs> uh, patio. Okay. Uh, All right. I, I want to play the role of the uh, prospect. I had a really, um, a really tough one that I called, and uh, he he wasn't getting off the phone. Like he wasn't actually saying he wasn't interested, but he was just like playing really hard to get kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So now here's what you need to know. What personality type do you think that prospect was? Um, extremely talkative. Well, he, he he wasn't talkative at all. <laughs> oh, he wasn't talkative. No, like he he wasn't uh, he wasn't cooperating with me on the phone, but at the same time, he wasn't getting off the phone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, let's do a role play then, and you can be this person. Yeah. So, I actually, sorry, I actually called for his wife, but he answered. So, all right. And what what information did his wife request? Uh, foreclosures. Okay, list of foreclosures. And where did they respond to that ad? Uh, online. Okay, so they were. She, the wife was actively looking online, looking for properties for sale online and came across your ad, went to your website, filled out all the information of what they're looking for, gave her contact information and hit submit. So let's just understand right off the bat, to jump through all of those hoops indicates there's a certain level of motivation already. It doesn't mean their timing is now, but there's a level of motivation there. Okay, so, um, yeah, hi, may I speak with Carol, please? Uh, she's not in. Uh, is this her husband? Uh, yes, who's this? this? It's James McDonald calling with Craig Proctor's office at Remax. And the reason I'm calling is because uh, Carol had requested a list of distress sale bank foreclosure properties from our website. And I just wanted to call and let you know I'm preparing that list right now. And uh, she should receive that shortly. 
I hope that's okay. Uh, actually, who's, who's this? How do you know my wife? Your wife requested a list of distress sale and bank foreclosure properties from our website. And I just wanted to call as a courtesy and let her know that I'm preparing that information and she should receive it shortly. I hope that's okay. Uh, yeah, but what, what, why would you call? To let you know that you've received, you're receiving the information and it, her request was not lost in cyberspace. Are you folks considering making a move in the next three to six months? Um, yeah, maybe. If you were to move, would you be staying here locally or would you consider moving out of the area? Have you thought of that? Uh, no, I, I don't know. No. And um, if you were to make a move, when do you think that might be? Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay. Do you, do you currently rent or do you own the home you live in right now? Uh, I, I really don't want to say. Okay. Well, as I said, the information is on its way. If you like, uh, I have a monthly newsletter that I'd be more than happy to send you every month. It's absolutely free. Most importantly, it's full of great market information, keep you updated on what's happening uh, with properties in your neighborhood and in neighborhoods that you might be interested in. Would you like to receive that for free every month? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. And would it be okay if I followed up with you maybe later on down the road when you're a little closer to possibly doing something? Would it be okay if I did that? Uh, yeah, but not, not for a while. When do you think would be a good time? I don't want to bother you prematurely. When do you think would be you'd be closer to thinking about doing something? Um, I don't know, a few months, maybe more. Okay, like how many months? Uh, I would say give me six months. Six months? Okay, wonderful. Thanks for your time today, and uh, and we'll send out that newsletter for you. Okay. All right. Remember this: we're not trying to convert everybody. The idea is not to convert every human being. I'm going to try to determine timing and motivation. I asked you three different questions to try to determine any kind of moving motivation whatsoever, and you, you know, you basically failed the test. That's okay. That's so, perfectly okay with me. Do you think I should have uh, tried again and try to get the wife on the phone, or because it almost came across like he was offended? I was I was calling for her. And, well, yeah. that. that that's, you know, all that is is your explanation of why you're calling needs to be better, okay? That's all this means. You've got to be very, very clear as to why you're calling for his wife, okay? Your wife went onto my website and requested a list of distress sale and bank foreclosure properties. I'm calling as a courtesy simply to let her know that I'm preparing that list of properties for her and she'll, she'll receive it shortly. I hope that's okay. See, here's what I think happened. I think that what probably happened is he didn't understand why you were calling in the first place. And immediately that you get off on the wrong foot. It's funny, I started this morning's session mentioning the introduction. The introduction is the key because it frames the sort of how the call is going to be perceived by the prospect. If they feel like you are a salesperson soliciting, the call is not going to go well. But if you do a really good job with that introduction and the prospect really understands why you're calling, the rest of the call will go much smoother. So this is my, my suspicion is that this prospect didn't understand why you were calling. And I made sure to be very, very clear with you as to why I was calling and that it was your wife that had requested this real estate information. Okay. Now, having said that, I'm not trying to make you motivated. If you're not motivated, you're not motivated. Good for you. All I'm trying to do is detect any kind of motivation. And I tried. I tried my damnedest to, to detect any motivation. And guess what? There wasn't any. Yeah, so, James. James. Yeah. yeah. Um, my voice is back here again. Yeah, boy, I, I, what, we're worried for you. Well, it's a bad feeling because you're talking and nothing is coming out. Uh, but I want to assure you I, I was not crying. Uh, <laughs> But my um, my son is sick, and I'm afraid I've I've got what he had. He was home from school, so I, I may lose my voice again. But the point I want to make here is, do you remember at the super conference, I said that the the purpose of the universal callback script is not to create motivation. Why? Because it's impossible for you and I to create motivation. The prospect is either motivated or they're not. So when the prospect fights us, and you are purposely you know, uh, trying to be very brief, you are certainly holding your cards close to your chest. Um, you, 
I, I took that as you perhaps were someone that was motivated, uh, but you were pretending that you weren't. Uh, when James asked you, is it okay to follow up, you said yes. Okay, now, if they're, typically if they're not motivated, they'll say no. And I, I welcome that. If, they, if they're not motivated, I want them to say no. I would rather the prospect tell me from the onset whether they're not motivated because we're going to be generating so many leads with this system, we don't have the time to follow up with prospects for weeks or months that absolutely have no interest. So um, what, did we, what did we find out about the prospect here? We found out that <clears throat> you're not doing something now, but maybe in the future. When James said, is it okay to follow up um, at a later time, you said yes. Uh, and then he tried to nail you down on, on a time frame, and you said six months. So James is going to call you back in half the time you indicated. Mm -hmm. I think that um, what you just did was a very realistic role play. Like you're going to get many people like that. What's unusual is the opposite. What's unusual is when you call the prospect back and they go, hey, James, I'm, I'm so glad you called today because um, – you know, we, we're ready to, to list our home today or we're ready to go look at houses. Now, that does happen, but um, generally, once people know that this is a salesperson on the phone, they do keep their, uh, their motivations, uh, you know, close to their chest. They, they don't want a salesperson to know what they're doing, and that's why we're asking these probing questions because we want to get the prospect to open up. We want to create some dialogue. And yeah. uh, I, I think James did a, I think you did a very good job of being standoffish, and I think James did a very good job of engaging you with these probing questions, and um, now he has your permission, right, to call you back. When James calls you back, you can't say, why are you calling me? Because he asked you, can I follow up with you? And you said yes. Now, yeah. the only other thing, I want to just point out a couple other things as well. I didn't just say, is it okay if I followed up with you? Because I think that if I had asked that, I think you would have said no. That's my impression. My impression is you probably would have said, no, that's okay. But I didn't. Okay, the way that the follow-up question is designed is we offer the newsletter first. You offer them something of value to them that has no strings attached. Hey, I, I, I create this monthly newsletter. It's full of great market information about your neighborhood and neighborhoods uh, that you might be interested in, as well as great helpful tips. It's absolutely free, and I send it out every month. Would you like to receive that uh, every month? You say yes. So now... Um, you know, now I know that if you said yes, it's because there's got to be a level of motivation there. So now I say, I don't want to bug you, but when would be a good time for me to follow up with you? And you know what? It's reciprocity. I've offered you something of value that you said yes to that would obviously be helpful to you. Now I'm saying, hey, look, I don't want to bug you, but, you know, when would be a better time for me to follow up with you when you might be closer to making your move? And I eventually got six months out of you. When I call you back in three months, see, this is what's, what's more likely. If you are seriously going to be buying a home or selling a home, you know that you're going to meet with a real estate agent. You're probably going to meet with somebody that you feel most comfortable with. I haven't pushed you. I haven't you know, made any threatening offers. I've simply provided information in a, mo in a very non-threatening manner to you. It's very likely that what I'm doing over time is I'm establishing myself as the agent you feel most comfortable with. Right. You know? So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that was realistic. But I think the biggest lesson there is get really good at making that follow-up with you later offer. We call it the newsletter offer, but really it's the follow-up with you later offer. Right. And I think you're right. Like I, the fact that the guy wasn't getting off the phone shows that there was motivation. But I, I think I think you're right when you say um, it was, uh, I guess, in the introduction, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, to some guy you're calling for his wife and it's a little vague and unclear as to why you're calling. And if it is vague and unclear why you're calling, then, you know, what would I assume? I would assume that you're, this is a solicitation right. and I need to get you off the phone. So, yeah, that introduction is absolutely critical. So, good job, and I hope that helps. Yeah, no, it does. Thank you. Okay, good let's, uh, let's see who's next. Well, we had a question, and I thought this would be a good time for this question from Alex, and it says, is it important that when we call the prospect to follow up that we try to identify what type of personality they, 
personality they are so we can better communicate or simply use the universal scripts to try to overcome the objections. Okay, well, first of all, personality type does not adjust the script. You know, it doesn't, that's not, it, we're not going to base the words that we say on the personality type. What it means is we just have to understand who we're talking to. Like, let me give you a great example. If we're on the phone and somebody comes across as, as sounding rude because they're very short, they're probably a D personality. That doesn't mean they lack motivation though, right? The fact that they're a D and they're very curt, they're very short with you and they're very frank may come across as rude. But it doesn't mean that they're not motivated, just as the high I personality comes across as very gregarious and outgoing and friendly doesn't mean that they're motivated. So if you can identify personality type, that's wonderful. Don't let it fool you into thinking that it means motivation or lack of motivation. Only the answers to, their, to the questions are going to teach you level of motivation. Okay, here's a question here from Alicia. She says, uh, the buyer was told he wouldn't have to sign anything. How do you get the buyer to sign the buyer-broker buyer agreement uh, when you meet with him if he, objects, if he objects at the meeting, which brings up, uh, and he brings up the fact that he was told he wouldn't have to sign anything. Well, he doesn't have to sign anything. If uh, James is my buyer, and James, I get you to my office, or I meet you at, at your home, uh, and you won't sign the buyer agency agreement, then I also don't have to continue showing James houses. Right? So, yeah, absolutely, the buyer does not have to sign the buyer agency agreement, but I also, as a realtor, don't have to spend any more time with this buyer. So you will find that some of the buyers you meet with will not sign the exclusive buyer agency agreement, just like you found that some of the sellers you meet with won't sign a listing agreement. But that doesn't mean you stop trying. Well, let me point out something else in the language that you can use as well. You know, originally, um, the language went like this. You're never obligated to buy a home. You're never obligated to buy a home. It's our, our appointment is absolutely free. You know, don't bring your wallet or checkbook. It's absolutely free, and you're never obligated to buy a home. I'm flexible. What would be good for you? Days, evenings, weekends. If you're worried about that language, baby step it. Just start by saying you're never obligated to buy a home. Okay, uh, Megan's asking this. She says, um, uh, James and Craig, how long should we try to contact prospects that we just have not been able to get a hold of? Uh, Megan, the answer to that really depends on uh, your backlog of leads. So if you're generating a lot of brand new leads, I don't want you not having the time to reach your brand new leads because you're still trying to reach somebody that you haven't been able to reach uh, that came in a couple weeks ago. So uh, the more new leads you generate, uh, that's going to dictate um, how persistent you're going to be with your existing leads. Now, if I don't have a lot of new leads coming in, that should mean I have more time to uh, continue to follow up with, um, with uh, my old leads that I have not been able to reach. Uh, but I was pretty persistent. Uh, I did a pretty good job of reaching 70 to 75% of my leads in the first two or three days. Okay, you're not going to reach them all. That's why a lot of people have caller ID, right, so they can screen out calls. So you're never going to reach them all. We've talked to you about some techniques that you can use to do a better job. But uh, if you're not reaching at least 70% of, uh, of the prospects, then we can probably help you do that. 70% is realistic. So let's do another role playing. I have some volunteers here in the chat. Uh, there's a few of you that have said, hey, um, I'm ready to volunteer. Uh, so uh, James Quigley would like to volunteer. Let's open up James's line, and uh, we'll see what type of prospect he would like us to be. OK, hold on one moment. James, you're open. Hello, Craig. How are you doing? Uh, very good. How are you doing today, Jim? I'm doing well. I heard Sacramento. It's kind of raining out here, but it's a good day. What type of prospect would you like me to be, a buyer or a seller? Um, why don't you be a seller responding to an ad I put in a local suburban newspaper related to passing a home inspection? Uh, okay, uh, so let's. you're calling me. Ring, ring. Hello, is this Craig? Uh, speaking. 
Yes, Greg. My name is Jim Quigley. I'm with Prime California Homes. And the reason I'm calling is I received your request on a, in the Press Tribune about the report for home inspection. And I just want to let you know I prepared that and I'm putting it in the mail for you. Will that be okay? Uh, yeah, I didn't know that that was coming from a real estate agent, though. Yeah, we do provide reports, so that's something that we do. Um, by the way, are you folks planning on making a move in the next three to six months? Uh, yeah, we are We are thinking about it. Okay, great. Well, if you were to move, would you be staying in the area or moving out of the area? Uh, we want to stay in the area. I see. All right. And if you did move, when do you think that might be? Uh, I guess as soon as we find uh, find a place. All right. Well, great. Uh, do you have a realtor to help you when the time is right? Uh, we've been out looking at a couple of open houses, uh, so we've met a few realtors. Okay. Have you... Have you signed anything with any realtor? Uh, no, we have not. I see. Okay. Would you prefer to buy your next home, or would you rather sell the home you have first? Uh, I'd like to, to find something first. Okay. I'd like to buy first. All right. Well, very good. Um, so what um... – <laughs> Now what? <laughs> okay. All right. Now i got to switch over to the buyer's good. Um, so this is what I have, Craig. Um, I have a great service. It's called my VIP homeowner service. And the way this works is, is if I know okay, the hey, 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 let's, let's stop here for a second, Jim. Now, do you think buyers are looking for a service? Probably not. No. What about, let's, let's go through this again from the top. What is it that buyers want? Well, they want uh, a house. They want information. They want houses. Okay, so houses. everyone write this down. Buyers want houses, right. and sellers want buyers. Okay, so when we start talking about, well, I have a service for you, you know what the buyer's thinking? The buyer's thinking, oh, no, what am I getting into? This sounds right. like it's going to cost money, and it sounds like I'm going to get obligated. It sounds like this realtor is trying to hook me into something. So look at the script. The script just says it talks about houses. So just just – Go from the script. Okay, let me also make one other suggestion. Uh, this is not uncommon, but when you make the transition from the questions to the offer, it becomes very awkward. Okay, you've asked these questions, and now it's like, okay, here comes the pitch, and all of a sudden it gets really awkward. What you need to have is you need to have like a go-to uh, string of words that make it uh, that make that transition smooth. Like for example, uh, you could just say this. Would you like me to? Would you like me to? There. So you've asked the questions. Craig says, I want to buy. We're looking around. We're not obligated with another agent. Now you know you want to make the buyer offer. So how do you make the offer? Start by just simply saying, would you like me to? Would you like me to email you every day all the great deals that come on the market? Would you like me to set you up on this? But it, you've got to make that transition so that it isn't awkward. And, yeah, and it doesn't sound like a sales pitch. You don't want to change your tonality, right? That's the point that, that James is making is, is everything is, is fine and dandy up until when you're about to make the offer. And then it, it's almost like everything changes, right? It's like, okay, uh, you're, you're sending a signal to the prospect. Okay, here comes the sales pitch. So let's do this again. Um, uh, you asked me, the last question you asked me is, do I prefer to buy first or sell first? And I said, I'd really like to, to find a place first. Now what does that tell your brain? Okay, Craig's a buy first guy. Even though you may have been prepared to make the seller the sell first offer, you go into the bottom left-hand corner. So without any hesitation, without any pause, without changing your tonality, you just step right into that. So you want me to do that? Well, so Craig, would you like to e email you daily updates of homes that match your home buying criteria from all the real estate companies? Our list includes bank foreclosures, company-owned properties, and other distressed sales. And best of all, it's free. And of course, you're never obligated to buy a home. Would that be interesting? Uh, yeah, that sounds good, Jim, but I, I am uh, getting uh, inf this information from uh, the other agents that I met at the open house. Well, that's fine. So, I, you know, I, I don't want to waste your time. That you're getting. But uh, what I like to tell people is this list that I have is really a cool list. It's got private properties, uh, some properties that we find through probate, 
These are special properties. Um, sometimes they're company-owned properties, things like that. It's a great list. Does that sound great? Okay. Uh, what part did you forget to say? It's a great list, and does it cost money? And it's free. And <laughs> I'm never obligated to do anything, never obligated right? Never obligated to buy a home. Right. Remember, the two fears, the only reason the buyer would say no to what you're proposing here is fear of cost or obligation. Okay, so let's say I, I, I accept that. I go, yeah, okay, well, yeah, it sounds like, um, that sounds like it's good information to have. I'll take it. Okay, well, great. Well, Craig, when can we get together for about 20 minutes or so so I can take down exactly what you're looking for? Well, why don't I just tell you right now, like, why do we need to meet? Well, what I want to do is do a good job for you, and so rather than sending you hundreds of properties that don't meet your exact criteria, we can sit down for about 20 minutes. I've got a form that I fill out. I'll get some exact information, and we can go from there. Okay, so uh, when we get together, do I have to sign anything? Oh, of course not. don't have to do anything. What works okay. better for you afternoons or mornings? Uh, well, look, I'll, I, I, I should talk to my wife because uh, I want her to be there. Uh, it's important that she's there. So uh, I'm not sure of what her, her schedule is, so why don't I find that out, and I'll call you back. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we set a tentative time that works, and if, if you check with your wife and it doesn't work for her, we can set another time. Would tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock be okay? Perfect. So we book an appointment. I see um, this is an objection, right? A very common objection is, uh, look, I'd love to meet with you, but i got to check my work schedule. i got to check with my spouse. And Jim did an excellent job of handling that objection. You handled that objection with a very reasonable solution. And that's when the rubber hits the road. You're, you're at the fork in the road now because you have solved this object, this problem. So if the, the prospect is sincere, then they should agree that this is a reasonable solution to this problem and book an appointment with you. Now, if they're not sincere about wanting to meet with you, in other words, if this objection was not a real objection, it's just something that they created because they really don't want to meet with you, what you'll find when you come up with, when you offer this reasonable solution, is they immediately invent yet another objection. And Jim, you've been on the phone with buyers before, right? When that happens, like you handle right. the objection, and then they immediately come up with another obje objection. So they might say something like this, well, uh, you know, that sounds great, Jim, but I don't know if I'm ready uh, to, to meet with an agent quite yet. What does that tell us about the prospect? The more, well, yeah, I mean, well, they might be motivated, but they're not going to be meeting with us. So the more they fight us, the more that tells our brain, well, this is a prospect that I shouldn't spend any time with. I, I shouldn't be following up with this prospect because they're not sincere. I sense that they're lying to me. Okay, uh, I've, uh, every time I handle an objection, they immediately invent another objection. That's not a good sign. Uh, a few minutes ago, when uh, we did uh, the, the the former replay, uh, uh, when we did a when we were doing the role play rather, James says, "Is it okay to follow up with you at a later time?" If the prospect says no, that's a bad sign. If they say yes, we call this permission marketing, right? If they say yes, then your next question obviously should be, "Okay, great. Well, when's a good time for me to do that?" See, earlier in my career, I didn't do I I wasn't smart enough to ask that question. I would simply say, is it okay if I follow up with you at a later time? They'd say yes, and then I would guess, and often I would guess incorrectly. So you did a great job there, Jim. Um, really, really happy with what I heard. Um, and uh, we tend to uh, get those of you that are volunteering tend to be those that, uh, that are really good at the script. So uh, that, that kind of doesn't surprise me, but uh, keep up the good work, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Thank you. Okay, um, let's... Um, Go back to our chat questions here, James McDonald. Nick is asking this. Um, if you can determine motivation and timing are present uh, but are still hitting resistance, how hard should you push for the appointment before setting up a follow-up call? Uh, well, I mean, what a, a very, very difficult question to answer. Here's what you need to be assured. If you... If you feel assured that the prospect understands the offer that you're making, they really understand the offer, they really understand that there is no cost or obligation attached to the offer, 
and they still decline your appointment, you should, you should then offer to follow up with them. Not a problem. Immediately pivot and make the newsletter offer. But, but if you feel like, gee, you know, I think that the reason this prospect is declining my appointment is because they don't understand. And if that's true, then reiterate. Re reiterate the offer. Um, Craig, you know, uh, you responded to my ad um, that I was running online. So you're obviously spending some of your time looking online for properties. All I'm proposing we do is instead of you taking hours trying to find the perfect property, if I know what you're looking for, I will automatically email you those perfect properties, including and especially the hard to find great deals. They'll be sitting for you in your email inbox as they come on the market. Absolutely no cost to you whatsoever. No obligation for you to ever buy anything if you don't want to. All I want to do is a good job in determining what you're looking for. Are you sure you wouldn't reconsider a brief 15-minute appointment at your convenience, Craig? Okay, now, Craig says no to that. Well, I'm pretty satisfied that Craig understands the offer that I'm making. He understands it. He gets it. He understands there's no cost or obligation to it, and he still declines my offer. Well, I'm not going to make the offer again. I'm simply going to say this. Okay, Craig, fair enough. Listen, though, in the, in the interim, I've got a great newsletter that I create every month full of great market information, updates on what's happening with home prices and availability in the marketplace, as well as great tips to prepare for an eventual move. It's absolutely free, and I'd be more than happy to send that newsletter out to you every month. Would you, uh, would you like to receive that? Craig says yes. Then I say, and Craig, when would be a good time for me to follow up with you when you might be a little closer to perhaps making your move? And I shut up and I wait for Craig to give me a time. Okay, so that's fine. Um, but again, the, the big question is, does the prospect truly understand your offer? If the answer is yes and they decline, then move on and offer to follow up with them. If you feel like I don't think they really understood the benefit of the offer that I'm making them, then restate the offer again. That's all. And use the words, are you sure you wouldn't reconsider a brief 15-minute appointment at your convenience? Right? That word, reconsider. Are you sure you wouldn't reconsider a brief appointment at your convenience after you've stated again, the, restated the benefit? Okay. Hope that helps. Here's our, here's our next question. Uh, our next question is, I originally followed up with a Facebook lead. I booked an appointment, but then she canceled. I've been calling her back, and she has not been answering. Should I keep following up or throw away the lead? Well, uh, if she's not, um, okay, I would not, when I call that lead back, I would not be leaving a message. I would just be trying to, to reach that lead. Um, my question would be, was there a lot of time between when you booked the appointment and when the appointment was supposed to take place? Remember, time is not your friend. You want to book your appointments as close to now as possible because only bad things can happen. If you find that this happens a lot, if you're booking appointments and you find that a high percentage of the appointments you book are not showing up, then it's not them, it's you, I promise you. Okay, so it's, um, it's repetition that will tell you what the problem is. Does everyone understand that? If you know one out of 10 appointments you book, there are no show, that wouldn't cause me to go back and uh, reinvent the system, right? I would. Uh, I would be happy with that, but if it's the opposite, if like nine out of 10 or eight out of 10 appointments you book are no-shows, clearly it's something that you're saying, something that you need to change. So, um, you know, usually what happens when the prospect says yes and then they don't show up, it really means that they didn't understand the benefit of meeting with you. You know, if you're offer, if you're speaking to a buyer on the phone and uh, I said, no, James, when you meet with me at my office, I'm going to give you a whole box full of gold bricks. I'm pretty darn sure that James would keep that appointment and he would meet at my office. Why? Because everyone knows the value of gold bricks. But let me ask everybody this. Have you ever been on the phone with a telemarketer before? And just to get the telemarketer off the phone, you might say, yeah, 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 okay, whatever, right? Could that be happening to you? Could the prospect be saying yes to the appointment just to get rid of you? Does the prospect actually understand the benefit of meeting with you? Because if they do, they should be showing up. Now, you're always going to have people that actually forget. 
How many of you have, um, you've signed up, you bought tickets to a concert or tickets to a sporting event, and you actually forgot about it? That's an event that you actually wanted to attend. You paid money for the tickets, and you forgot about it. So let's remember that that can happen as well, that um, it, you know, just because they don't show up doesn't necessarily mean they weren't interested. Perhaps they just forgot, and that's why you want the appointment as close to now as possible. Okay, let's go back and do another role play. Uh, Andrea, let's take our next volunteer. Yes, sir. Our next guest, Anton Vu. Your mic is now open. Hello. Uh, hi, Anton. Hello. How are you doing this morning? Hello. Hi, Craig. Hi, uh, hi, James. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. Doing now, good. what type of prospect do you want me to be, Anton? A buyer or a seller? Oh, can you be a buyer? I just started with this. Okay, so Anton is a beginner. He's typed in here, I'd like to volunteer, I'm a beginner. All right, we'll try to go easy on you, Anton. So okay. you're calling me, you're the realtor, I'm a buyer, ring, ring, and I say hello. Hello, hi, is Mr. Uh, Proctor there, please? Speaking. Hello, hi, Mr. Proctor, my name is Anton with Remax. The reason why I'm calling you is because um, I've received your requests for the information you wanted, and I popped it in the mail for you, is that okay? Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, great. I was wondering, are, are you folks planning to make a move in the next three to six months? Uh, we've been thinking about it, yes. Okay. Do you think it's be more than six months or less than six months? Uh, it just uh, depends on a lot of things. Okay, great. Uh, do you currently own or do you currently okay, now, own? Hang on. Anton, uh, can I give yes. you some advice? Yes. Uh, every time I say something, you're showing great. Now, that makes you sound like a telemarketer. Okay, thank you. Right? It, like when you're on the phone with a the telemarketer, they say things like this. Every time you say something, they say, great, fantastic, awesome. You don't want to sound like a telemarketer. So you, right, well, every time I say something, there's no law that says you have to say great. Thank you. I appreciate that greatly. Okay, so uh, you talk, you asked about timing, and I said, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Might be six months. You said, well, over or under? I said, well, it depends on a few things. Now what? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you currently rent or do you own your home? Uh, we rent our own home. We rent our home. Okay. Are you planning to stay in the area or moving out of the area? Uh, I want to move closer to work. Okay. If you were to move, um, what do you think it might be? Uh, well, like I said, we want to look around, and if we find the right place, we'll do it. And if we don't, then oh. I guess we'll stay here. We don't, we don't have to move. Okay. Um, do you currently have a realtor to help you? Uh, my wife's um, friend at work, her husband's a realtor, and he's been sending us some stuff. Okay, so uh, are you 100% obligated to, uh, to this real estate agent? Uh, not really. He came over to the house and he brought some listings over last week, but, um, you know, I've only met the guy once. Okay. Um, do I go to 6 or Market Watch News? I don't know. kind of uh, lost track. Um, um, let me go to 6. Would it be okay if I follow up with you at a later time? And uh, okay, hang on. What, what? Let's stop here, Anton. Okay. I'm renting, and I want to buy a house. I'm saying uh, you're trying to nail me down on time, and I'm saying I'm not sure on the timing. You said is it over six months or under six months? I said it depends on things, and really, what it depends on is me finding a place. I said I don't have to move. Okay. Why would Why would you not want to try to meet with me? Okay. And also, he he had another real estate agent that met with him and gave him some some property listings. So you know what people, you know, normal people that aren't interested in, in doing anything, probably wouldn't do that. Like, okay, let, let me say this, Anton. If you go to the bottom left hand corner, and you make that buyer offer, and I agree to meet with you, and when I meet with you, you sign me up to a one year exclusive buyer agency agreement. What that means is it, it doesn't matter. When I buy a home within the next year, you're going to get compensated. Makes sense. Thank right? You. So wouldn't that be like I don't have to be buying today. If I meet with you, you sign me up to one-year buyer agency agreement. Any time in the next year if I buy, you're going to get compensated. So you should try to do that. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. All right. So let's go down to that offer. Okay. Um, would you like me to email you? Would you like me to email you daily updates of home that matches your home buying criteria for uh, uh, from all the real estate companies? Our list includes bank-owned foreclosures, company-owned properties, 
and other distressed sales, it's it's a free service, and of course, you're never obligated to buy. Would that interest you? Uh, yeah, it does interest me. But like I said, Anton, I've, I've already got this other guy dropping off information, so uh, I, I think we we're probably already getting it. Oh, I. Um, okay, I'm, I'm stuck. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to acknowledge that, but you want to differentiate your list. Okay, because okay. here's what you could say, right? We could say this. Oh, well, okay, Craig, I guess you're good then because, uh, you know, I would just be sending you the exact same information as the other guy, so sorry for bothering you. Goodbye. You okay. could say that, okay. but, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money in real estate doing that. So okay. uh, what you want to do is you want to make your list sound different and better than whatever information I'm currently getting. And it wouldn't matter whether the prospect says, well, I'm already getting the information because I go on realtor.com or um, I'm, um, you know, I'm online or I read the newspaper every day or I'm driving all the streets in the neighborhood I'm interested in. What you're about to offer really is superior than any other option the buyer could have. So know that with confidence that what you're about to offer is superior than any other method the buyer has of obtaining real estate information. So you're going to make this list sound delicious. You're going to make it sound different and better and you're not telling me that I can't to stop getting information from the other realtor. I want you to position this like as well in addition. So let me hear you differentiate what uh, uh, differentiate the list that you're going to send me. Why is it different okay. and better? Okay, our list includes um, are your homes, bank-owned properties, and other properties that's not on the market. Um, would that be interested to uh, would Would you be interested in the, in that list? Yeah, you don't even have to say that aren't on the market. You could say this. You could say, look, um, I'm not – first thing you want to start off with is, hey, I'm not sure what the other realtor is sending you. But my list, bank foreclosures, company-owned properties, distress sales, you might want to add something like uh, homes that have been recently reduced, and it's a free service, and you're never obligated to do anything. Would you like to get information on those properties as well? Okay, got it. What do you think the buyer is going to say? Yes. Uh, the buyers. I'll tell you one thing. The buyers probably not going to say, "No, I wouldn't be information. I wouldn't be interested in those properties." You're never going to hear that. Almost always, they're going to say yes. Now you're going to come back with the commitment. So you got me backed into a corner, right? You've made an offer of all of these great homes, including bank foreclosure, company owned properties, distress sales. You said it's free. I'm never obligated to do anything. Would I like that information? Would I like to get that information as well? And I say. Yes. Now right. um, you're going to come back with a commitment, which is? Uh, when can we get together for about 20 minutes or so so I can take down exactly what you're looking for? Okay. Now let's get inside the buyer's head. The buyer's thinking, uh-oh, there's a commitment to this offer. I want the free list of homes. I want the bank foreclosures, the distress sales. I want all that. But now Anton, the realtor, is saying, i got to meet with them. So my knee-jerk response as a buyer prospect is, well, why do we need to meet? Can I well, just tell you what I'm looking for over the phone? Well, rather than emailing you hundreds of homes, which may or may not meet your criteria or the risk of missing out on a perfect one, if we could get together for about 20 minutes, I could have a form that I fill out, and I could take down exactly what you're looking for. And I just want to do a good job for you. So, Makes total sense, right? Makes total sense. Who could? No buyer in the world could argue with that. It's like, hey, man, I want to do a good job for you. You know, rather than me emailing you dozens of homes, which may or may not match your criteria, or worse than that, missing out on the perfect one, if we can get together for about 15 or 20 minutes, I can take down exactly what you're looking for, and then that way, I can send you homes that are a perfect match. When would be a good time for us to get together? Days or evenings? See how natural that is? Yes. And I say, uh, I say well, um, Days or evenings? Uh, gee, I don't know. I, I'd have to check my work schedule. I got your number here, Anton. Once I check my work schedule, why don't I call you back? Okay, um, that's fine. Or we could, what we could do is that we could set up a tentative uh, appointment. And yeah, well, don't don't say it. that's don't say that's fine because we don't want them to do that, right? I want you to go in. I want you to say, look, since we're since we're both on the phone right now, why don't we set up a tentative time? Look, since we're both on the phone right now, why don't we set up a tentative time? And if you can't make it at that time, you can just give me a call back and we'll reschedule. Perfect. That is a reasonable solution to my objection. 
Now, I should say yes, but what if I don't say yes? What if I say, well, gee, um, look, uh, I don't know if we're quite ready to meet with a realtor right now, or I give you some other objection. It tells you something about me. It tells you that I was not being sincere with you. That's a bad sign. Now, remember, the name of the game, the goal with this system, is I want all of you to generate so many leads that when you determine that you've got someone on the phone like me who's not sincere, that you don't have to waste your time with me. Because if I'm that type of prospect, you know that no matter what you say to me, if I'm not sincere, I'm going to continue to invent obstacles, objections, reasons why I can't meet with you. So the script has done its job, right? The script is going to help you determine who you're going to spend time with and who you're not going to spend time with. And remember what I said earlier, you and I, we can't create motivation that doesn't exist. It's either there or it's not. The job of the script is not motivation. Why? Because it's impossible to create motivation. They're either motivated or they're not motivated. But in three minutes or less, I can teach you how to determine who is motivated and who's worthy of your follow-up and who is going to be a total waste of time. So let's say I go, okay, I'll meet with you. Uh, now, I can't meet with you for about a week, though. Okay. Well, that's not okay. That's bad. Because what did we just talk about a minute ago? The chance, time is not our friend. If I can't meet with you for a week, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to set this appointment, and I'm either going to forget, or I'm going to come into contact with another realtor, and I'm not going to show up, or I'm going to already, you know, do business with somebody else before our appointment in a week. So you might want to dig a little deeper and say, well, is there, uh, is there any way that we could get together in the next, uh, the next day or two? Okay. Um, I could rearrange my schedule to make it very, uh, very convenient for you. Um, you know, only for 15 minutes or so to uh, take down exactly what you're looking for so that way we can get started. Right. We could either meet at my office or I, I, I could, we could meet at your home. You want to, you want to try to get that appointment as close okay. to now as possible. Now, if they've got a really, really good reason, why they can't meet with you in the next week, and you believe that reason, then you, you have to go with it. There's nothing you can do about it, and sometimes there is nothing we can do. We can't advance that appointment, but uh, we can't make that appointment any closer to now, but at least we should try. Okay. We should fight for the appointment, and we should fight to get that appointment as close to now as possible, because I lost a lot of money earlier in my career. I lost a lot of money setting up appointments, but not fighting to get that appointment as close to now as possible. So by the time the appointment rolled around, they either um, you know, sent me an email or called me saying, hey, sorry, man, we already met up with another agent and we signed up with them, or they completely forgot about the appointment. Got it. Thank you so much. This is really helpful in helping us actually both by understanding what we should be saying, what we shouldn't be saying. We, hey, you did a really good job, and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you, you volunteered. I know it takes some courage when you're new with this to volunteer because we've got a couple hundred people on, on with us here today. But I want to I thank you for doing that, and I think we made some, some good points here. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, James. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Craig, okay, Craig, let me, um, just as far as the appointment goes, it's very common that you'll, um, you'll try to book the appointment by saying this. Um, uh, when have you got 15 minutes so we can get together and take down exactly what you're looking for? And you leave it open-ended. When you leave it open-ended like that, when would be a good time? When have you got 15 minutes so we can sit down and do a good job for you? They're very likely going to tell you a time that is too far away. That's why saying days or evenings is, or you know, mornings, afternoons is a better way of doing it. You, you want the prospect, you want to narrow the prospect to feel like they're setting the time, but really you're putting boundaries. If you say, what would you prefer, uh, mornings or afternoons? They say afternoons. You say, what would be better, this afternoon or perhaps tomorrow afternoon? They say, well, tomorrow afternoon would be better. All right, and what would be better, something early in the afternoon, closer to noon time, or something a little later on in the afternoon after 3 o'clock? It feels to them like they're picking the time. But as you can clearly see, you are very much directing them to a very close appointment, right? But if you just say, hey, Craig, when would be a good time to get together? You know yeah, what you're going to say? If it's wide open. Say two weeks. Yeah, if it's wide open, they're, they're, they, they are probably going to pick a time that uh, is not to your benefit. Now, uh, James, I think I mentioned this last Thursday, but 
I made a small change to that language and I eliminated a lot of my evening appointments. So my, the choice I used to give prospects is when's a, a better, when's a good time for us to get together, uh, days or evenings, and of course a lot of the prospects would pick evenings. So I just switched that choice to when's a better time, to, when's a good time to get together, mornings or afternoons? Mm -hmm. Okay, so their choice was no longer evenings. Now, like, they when, like, when they, like when the dentist office calls you, notice how they never offer you an evening appointment? Right, the appointment is always during the day, and you know what you do? You say, "Okay, well, yeah, I'll take the morning then." Okay, uh, we're pretty much out of time here, James. Uh, what do you want to say before we wrap it up about tomorrow's ad clinic? Yeah, well, I was just going to mention. Uh, please do upload your uh, your ads for tomorrow's ad clinic. We've got some already, and we really do appreciate that. But we need more. The more ads we have to look at, the better. So especially if you have ads that are performing really well for you, please upload those. Okay, so let me repeat that. Do not only upload ads that are not working, right? Also, upload ads that are working. We want to see the good ads as well as the ads that need help. And a lot of times, when you send us an ad and say, this ad didn't work, nine times out of ten, it's because it's a homemade ad. You didn't copy the ads that we've given you. So it's really encouraging for everybody when you send us really good, uh, well-performing ads that you're running to generate lots of high-quality leads. So please do that. And then tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern, we'll get on the webinar and we'll go through all of these ads and we can all look at them together while we discuss them and we offer our critique and uh, some constructive ideas as to how you could improve on the quality and quantity of response. Okay, well, good stuff. We better wrap it up and let you guys uh, get out there and make some money and sell some real estate. So uh, we look forward to talking to everyone uh, tomorrow on our Ad Clinic webinar. Again, it's 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. on the East Coast. Uh, James and Andrea, thanks for uh, your help here today, and we'll talk to everyone tomorrow. That concludes today's Roleplay webinar.